Pro-government and rebel armed groups in Yemen have accused each other of breaking the UN-mediated ceasefire just hours after it came into effect Tuesday. As Henry Ridgewell reports, all sides in the conflict are accused of committing human rights violations. Just hours after the UN-mediated ceasefire came into effect, there were reports of Saudi-led airstrikes in Sana'a and ground fighting in the southern city of Taiz. Both sides blamed each other for the attacks. Speaking Tuesday at the beginning of peace talks in Switzerland, the UN special envoy to Yemen appealed for compromise. Yemen is being eaten up by fire from all sides as a result of the violence and the armed conflict in the country. And here we repeat again, the only solution is a political solution, and the violence must stop. For months, Yemen has been spiraling toward all-out civil war between Iran-backed Houthi rebels and forces loyal to the president. A Saudi-led coalition of Gulf Arab states aided by the United States has been carrying out airstrikes against the Houthis since March. Nearly 6,000 people have been killed in the fighting. Aid groups say the humanitarian situation is catastrophic, with civilians living under a state of siege. Unfortunately, about 2.5 million displaced have, uh, have been around in different areas in not a well-prepared uh, living situation. And this in itself is, uh, is a high-risk area of uh, mosquito breeding, of uh, outbreaks of malaria, outbreaks of dengue. Human rights groups have accused the Saudi-led coalition of attacking civilian targets. Riyadh and its backers deny targeting civilians. Amnesty International says at least five airstrikes since August have struck schools. Six and a half thousand children were attending these schools, you know, and all of them have had their education severely disrupted as, as a result. You know, schools should be a safe space for children uh, and for civilian life. In some of these cases, these schools were, were targeted more than once and struck on, on repeated days. Saudi Arabia has not responded to Amnesty's allegations. The peace talks are due to last a week, but rivals on the ground are not disarming. Yemen's prime minister claimed Wednesday that several of what he called resistance groups are being merged into one unified force to take on the Houthis. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. Now for the latest on the situation in Yemen, Zaid al Alaya, a journalist and analyst, joins me by phone from Sana'a. Uh, Zaid, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. Now, we know that uh, the men and women uh, having talks in Switzerland said they had reached a ceasefire agreement. Do the people inside uh, Yemen really uh, seem to be paying attention to that ceasefire deal? People in Yemen, the people that I speak to in the streets, on public transportations, they become very afraid when they hear about a truce that was uh, announced by the coalition, because they remember the previous uh, truces that were signed, including the humanitarian truces. They did not even last for, the first one did not last for a couple of hours. The, the second truce that was agreed did not last for minutes. And now, with the truce announced, airstrikes are targeting more places in Marib, Taiz, Harab, in the borders, was uh, showered with loads of airstrikes on residential area on a lot of places that do not even have like military bases or military sites they 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 they, they airstrikes targets anything that is moving including vehicles of residents everything now what are you hearing why are both sides breaking this truce there is there is a lack of trust there is uh, suspicious there is no real intention of of, of truce uh, Saudis still uh, very arrogant that they could do uh, a sort of uh, gaining more grounds in order to improve the options of the uh, their, uh, the, the people that are talking, uh, the holding talks. If they gain more grounds, maybe this will improve their options. And the same thing with the Houthis also. When they advance into the Saudi borders, this also will make them more uh, entitled to more, like more options in the talks. Now, this is what mainly the two parties are working on. Are there any quarters that are floating any other idea of how to really resolve this problem in Yemen? Look, the, 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 the choice is not in the hand of Yemenis. Yemenis do not have choice. 
is the big powers that are using Yemen, Iran, U.S., uh, Europe, uh, Saudi Arabia, if they want to stop this clash or stop this war, they will. But including the West now, everybody, including the U.N., people are looking at whenever they write something negative against Saudi Arabia, it's sort of using Yemen to blackmail Saudi Arabia for more funds for the U.N., for the U.S., for even a lot of Western media that were reporting about Yemen airstrikes, they, they surprisingly stopped and they are not more, they're no longer interested to cover airstrikes or to cover the, the humanitarian disasters in Yemen. They cover it once and then they disappear. Well, Zaid, uh, thank you very much. We hope we get more coverage from Yemen. A uh, Sanaa-based journalist, uh, Zaid Al-Ali, is speaking to us uh, from Yemen.